Welcome to Amateur Decorating Like a Pro. I am Catherine. I wanted to do a plate wall for our dining room for a very long time. I shopped thrift stores, I shopped clearance stores, liquidation stores, and I was looking for unique plates. And I could never find something that was unique enough for me to put on my walls. Well, I'm excited, guys, because I actually just went through the entire process of going over to Dollar Tree, purchasing some of their plates, and designing the plates myself. Self. I wanted something different and something along the modern edge to deal with this traditional vibe of a beautiful plate wall. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks a lot for watching. Now I had to shop two Dollar Trees to get the plates I needed. And in the end, I ended up using 12 round dinner plates and 10 round salad plates. I gave the plates a really good bath in some gentle dish detergent and warm water. And that little decal on the back comes right off when it's wet. Now once I decided how many plates I wanted to use on the wall, I created templates and then put them on the wall so I could see what the layout would look like. Funny thing guys, I thought I wanted to arrange the plates this way, but while working on them in the garage and arranging them on the floor to dry, I stumbled across this arrangement. And now all I had to do was center it in the wall. Now, if you're going for basic straight lines, here's what you can do. Take your template and fold it in half, and then fold it in half again. You have four equal size plates to dot in the middle. Then when you're placing your plates in line on the wall, all of your dots should line up or your lines on your folds on your templates. Now this hanging method is for my inexpensive abstract art plates. It has nothing to do with hanging china or collectibles. You want to use the real deal plate hangers so you can go back and forth from dining and displaying them. But this is not for the fine china that you own or the collectibles. Now you'll have to decide when you want to attach your hangers for your plates to the back of your plate. At first I was going to hang only white plates. Then I decided that I wanted to paint the plates. So that's why things are a little out of order. For me, using the crazy glue, duct tape, D-rings was the best choice. A lot of these supplies I already had. Now this step is truly optional. I'm just using a nail file to break the glaze on the back of the plate. That way I can ensure that crazy glue is going to hold the metal D-ring in place. Can you see that little distressed area that I created with the nail file? Now, I tried to place the D-rings in the same spot every single time, but I was off on about half of them. So I did come up with an alternative to get everything centered on the wall, and I'll share that little tip with you a little bit later. I'm using the flat side of my D-ring, and I'm adding a few extra drops of the crazy glue when it is permanently in place. And by the way, not all of my D-rings were straight. So since they were a little crooked, I have to make some adjustments with how I applied them onto the plate so the plate would hang straight. The application was exactly the same for the larger dinner plates as it was for the smaller salad plates. I did add a little bit more glue, but as a side note, I also want to let you know you can use construction glue to adhere your D-rings to your plates as well. And then, of course, I add the tape there just to give it a little fiber to hold on to. So again, if there's no painting involved, once you apply these hangers, just wait 24 hours before you actually hang the plates on the wall. If you're going to paint your plates, 
Then wait until your paint dries 24 hours, apply your hangers to the back, and wait another 24 hours before you hang your plates. Now I'm going to also show you how to attach the actual plate adhesives. I only had about four of them. Applying these adhesives is exactly like applying a stamp to an envelope. You want to moisten the back of the adhesive hanger and just place it where you would like to on the back of the plate. Let it dry and then hang your plate. Now for my clients, I only use the adhesive hangers on the back of the plates. I decided to use one of those automotive oil pans from the Dollar Tree and it was perfect for this project. You want to fill it with water right up to the line where you have the pour spout there. So it's going to be easy for you to dip your plates in and out without spilling water. And when you get ready to discard the water, it's easy to carry as well. Now here are a couple of quick tips that I want to share with you. When you're applying your spray paint, short, quick bursts, you want those variations in color from light to dark. Try and keep your hands underneath your plate when you're working, especially when you're trying to hold the plate and gather more paint onto it. I struggled with that, but in the end, I found my groove. You can also put the plate in face down or right side up. That is your option. And multiple dips of the plate Yes, go ahead, go for it. You create a variation on your plate of lines and depth and you will really appreciate the whole look when the plate dries. Now you want to move quickly. If that paint stays in place too long, it'll form a skin and you'll have to remove it. Now sometimes I allowed the skin to adhere to the plate and sometimes I didn't. It creates sort of a lacy web effect if you want to have that, then by all means, use the skin. I really fell in love with the idea of dipping the plates multiple times from side to side to create a design of different shades of blue. You might want to try that when you're doing your favorite colors. Now the next time I do this, I'm going to use a deeper dipping pan. Not necessarily bigger, but deeper. I want to be able to place the plates in diagonally and see if I can get more of that marbly effect and even use more of that skin to create more lines in it to really give that marble look. The reason why I twirl the skewer around, I'm creating these lines that really create the marbling effect. And sometimes I'll actually shake the pan up to break up the design. I can see it because I'm looking straight down at it and I didn't want my camera to be so close to the spray paint that it would get paint on it. Okay, so the skin formed and I decided to use it on this plate. Look how beautifully it grabs the plate, guys.
Now spray painting should be done in a well ventilated area. My garage door is open, the windows are open, I'm wearing a mask on my nose and a scarf around my cheeks and mouth and I'm also wearing a scarf on my head. And as you can see, I'm wearing gloves. I have several pairs of gloves available because the spray paint dries these gloves almost as if they are hard in my hands or in a cast. So you want to have all of these things available, but more importantly, make sure it is a well ventilated area.
Now, once your paint is dry and you don't like the design, take a dry SOS pad and just rub the paint off of it and begin again. Now these three plates are in need of a double dip. So once they've started to dry, I decided to take them underneath the water one more time. Guys, this plate loves me. There will be water bubbles that form during the drying process. Try tilting the plate and see if the water just runs right off. There will be a distinct 3D effect to some of your plates, especially if you're using a lot of that skin, which makes the plates very beautiful and it gives them depth. I would suggest that you just leave the bubbles alone and just put on your clear acrylic because eventually water will evaporate.
these are the two clear acrylic sprays that I love. The Krylon, I get that one from Walmart, and the other one is from Hobby Lobby. The Hobby Lobby one doesn't have that smell, so it's more tolerable for me. The sprays will look cloudy, but they will dry clear. Well, now that the plates are dry, I bought them inside and I numbered them based upon how I wanted them to be laid out on the wall. Now, the templates on the wall also have numbers on them. And like I said, I didn't apply the D-rings in the exact same spot on every single plate. I used a ruler against the flash surface and then I marked the top of the D-ring with a piece of painter's tape. And then I simply transferred the mark of the painter's tape on to the template on the wall and then I was able to apply my picture hanging hook and that's it. Well okay let's match our numbers on our plates to the templates on the wall and we're done. Like pictures on a wall your plates are going to shift every now and then, maybe swing a little left or right. Just check and move them back into the proper place. I love this project guys and I wanted to take my time with this video so you could see me actually dipping the plates into the water and being totally surprised about what I was going to get when I bought them from underneath the paint. You just never know. And so you can imagine if you're creating something like this for your home to match your decor, you are going to love the creativity of these plates coming together. And when you saw the close-ups of all of these plates and seeing how how it is abstract, it is modern. So even if you are traditional, even if you're a boho chic, it doesn't matter. This is the perfect decor that can fit into any genre. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll consider doing so today and press that bell so you don't miss a single video. Thanks a lot for watching and as always, stay in prayer and stay creative.